Hello and welcome back to World 360. What investment deals did China and Saudi Arabia recently sign? Who all are lining up to buy India's BrahMos missile? Who is Silvio Bolisconi, a four-time Prime Minister in Italy who faced a slew of scandals and recently passed away? We answer these and more in today's episode. So first up, China and Saudi Arabia. On Sunday and Monday, the 10th Arab-China Business Conference was held in Riyadh, where China and Saudi Arabia signed multiple investment deals amounting to billions of dollars. These included a $5.6 billion deal to form a joint venture to develop, manufacture and sell e-vehicles, a $500 million cooperation deal on copper mining in Saudi Arabia, a $266 million deal on building construction in Saudi Arabia and more. There were also deals signed by Saudi Arabia and Hong Kong. But why does all of this matter? Well, for one, it's a sign of how bilateral relations between China and Saudi Arabia are on a high. It was just six months ago that Chinese President Xi Jinping visited Saudi Arabia and signed 35 deals worth $30 billion. Let's not forget that it was China who helped broker a peace deal between Saudi Arabia and its longtime regional foe, Iran, which was seen as a major boost to China's geopolitical position in the Middle East. The two countries have also been ramping up cooperation in multilateral bodies. For example, Saudi Arabia recently became a dialogue partner of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, the SCO, and it is also keen to join BRICS, which consists of Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa. Therefore, the slew of deals signed in the recent conference in Riyadh, among with all of these other factors, is another reminder that China-Saudi Arabia ties are riding high. This comes at a time when the kingdom's relations with the US and the West appear to be on the decline. In fact, during the Arab-China business conference in Riyadh, Saudi prince Abdulaziz bin Salman was asked how he viewed Western suspicions over growing ties between the kingdom and Beijing. He said he ignores such suspicions, adding, we don't have to be facing any choice which has to do with saying either with us or with the others. To put it in perspective, China is the largest trading partner of Arab countries and Saudi Arabia makes up about a quarter or 25% of that. Saudi Arabia is the world's top oil exporter and China is the world's biggest energy consumer. The growing closeness between the two countries on political, economic and geopolitical fronts has in turn fueled reports that Saudi Arabia could be open to letting China buy oil in the Chinese yuan, which could have ripple effects on the petrodollar. However, there are still reports on that. Nothing has been confirmed so far. For our next topic, we're looking at which countries are keen to buy India's BrahMos missiles, a supersonic cruise missile that can be launched from submarines, ships, airplanes or land. If you recall, in January 2022, India sold three units of BrahMos missiles to the Philippines for $375 million. Let's also not forget that any BrahMos deal requires a nod from Russia since the missile is, after all, a joint collaboration between Russia and India. Recent reports have now indicated that Vietnam is close to clinching a deal with India for three to five units of BrahMos missiles. That said, Vietnam has been in talks with India for several years regarding this deal. A range of factors have contributed to the slow progress of talks, including funding issues. That said, the queue to buy India's BrahMos missiles seems to have grown in recent years. Apart from the Philippines and Vietnam, other countries like Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore and even Egypt have expressed interest in buying the weapon system. Malaysia, for example, is keen on integrating BrahMos into its Su-30 fighter aircraft that are already in operation in its air force. In March this year, it was reported that Indonesia was keen to close a deal for BrahMos missiles ranging from $200 to $350 million. So why should we care about this? To put it simply, any sale of the BrahMos missiles is interesting because of two reasons. First, it's a feat for India's domestic arms manufacturing sector. Regional interest in India's BrahMos missile has also geopolitical cues. It's important to remember that India extended a line of credit to the Philippines in order to sell BrahMos to the country. This showed vested Indian interest to make the deal a success, especially at a time when Southeast Asian countries have been ramping up defence budgets in view of growing aggression in the South China Sea from countries like Beijing. 
For our last topic, we're looking at the colourful and controversial life of a major Italian political figure, Silvio Berlusconi. Berlusconi, a four-time Italian Prime Minister who faced sex scandals and corruption cases, died on 12th June at the age of 86 after a battle with leukaemia. Berlusconi was a billionaire media mogul, a former Prime Minister and a key player in Italy's opposition before he passed. He took office in 1994 and had four stints as Prime Minister until 2011. He was also extremely friendly with Russian President Vladimir Putin. In fact, on the day of Bolisconi's death, Putin issued a message of condolence calling the late politician a remarkable person, a true patriot and a patriarch of Italian politics. For me, Silvio was a dear person, a true friend, said Putin. Meanwhile, French President Emmanuel Macron described Bolisconi as a major figure in contemporary Italy. However, during his career, the late Italian politician faced charges of bribery, tax fraud and sex with an underage prostitute and using his office to try to cover it up. He was convicted in many of these cases but avoided jail because of his age. In Italy, citizens over the age of 70 are not put in jail but rather house arrest, a law promoted by Berlusconi himself. Let's also not forget how in 2011, Berlusconi resigned as Prime Minister after he lost his majority in Parliament at a time when Italy was facing an acute debt crisis. His resignation was in fact celebrated by many in the country. Thanks for watching. This is Pia Krishnkuti for The Print.